Hi, and uh, welcome to uh, Pitt Street Research. We are doing an interview today with Peter van der Meel, or in Dutch, Peter van der Maade, uh, Dutch, Dutch heritage there. Yes, that's right. He's the CEO of uh, BrainChip, listed on the ASX. Uh, welcome, Peter. Thank um, you. For people that don't know BrainChip uh, that well, in a nutshell, can you explain what you guys have invented slash developed and, and where you are now with, with the product? Yeah, we, um, we started in 2004 with this this project. Uh, the first 10 years was a lot of learning and, and developing and trying things out. In 2013, we uh, moved to the United States and we started going in fast forward. Um, what we have developed is a, uh, uh, a, a different way of, of processing sensor information. So what we're getting in is sensor information from a camera or from another, another type of sensor. And we, we process that information in a very different way from this traditional way where you have a microprocessor that goes around a little circle and tries to uh, interpret what what it, uh, what it is receiving. Our processor is working like, uh, like the human brain. The human brain is also receiving information through its eyes and ears and nose, yep. etc. And um, that information is uh, in the brain is processed in the form of spikes in a very uh, highly parallel way. So each cell processes information in, 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 uh, in parallel to any, every other cell. And that's exactly what Akita does. It right. processes everything in parallel. So if you look at Akita, what problem does Akita solve compared to other products on the market? Yeah. The Akita really has five advantages over any other product. The first thing is that it runs at a very, very low power uh, consumption. The, um, that means that you can run, um, you can run very complex uh, processes of a small battery. Like, um, for an example, uh, uh, odor classification, it can run of a small um, one and a half volt right. AA battery for five months. Right. So that's that's one of the biggest advantages of the, of the Akita technology. It's also very fast compared to uh, other products that are simply using a DSP or something like that that um, is still processing in the traditional way of going around this little loop instead of uh, doing everything in parallel. Our processor can run at low clock speeds. Because it runs at low clock speeds, it is uh, very uh, efficient and very fast. Right. Uh, it also has learning on chip. Um, instant learning, just like your brain learns. You don't yeah. have to have a thousand images of a dog to recognize a dog. We can do that with a single shot. You show it one image and it immediately learns what, what this animal so is. So the chip gets better as it, it's out there in the world, learning by itself? Yeah, it that's how you can or you can train it up before you sell yeah. that. But, it, but even after that, it would still get better it as could, it is in the it field. It could, yes, yeah. if you want to. Right. Okay. But you, also, you could use this uh, facility for, uh, for configuration in the field. If you have a car, for instance, that recognizes the driver, you don't want to have to train it on the image of the driver. What you do is you have a driver sitting in a seat and train it in, in a single shot, and now the car recognizes the right. driver. So then the car can adjust the seat and the radio station and the environment to the driver's right. uh, uh, preferences. One of the most important thing is also that the chip is compatible with, with TensorFlow. And TensorFlow is, a, is a, a, an environment that is familiar to every data scientist in the world. So people can start using this chip straight away. The chip is very small, very light, and it has on-chip convolution, which means that existing networks, people that have pe uh, people already developed over time, CNNs can run on this uh, spiking chip. Right, and I think one of the, the key advantages as well is that it doesn't need a connection to the cloud, to the internet, to 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 perform its its, its functions. Right. So let's say uh, an autonomous vehicle, it's got one of these chips in it, as an example. There's no time really to connect to the internet to interpret you know, certain things <laughs> and to come back with a response. It does it on chip. Uh, so with you know instantaneously uh, almost uh, yes. you get a response from the that's chip. correct yes you uh, you don't need to send anything up to the cloud <coughs> everything is uh, processed right there on the uh, yeah on the chip. so that's a big big thing in in edge computing mm -hmm. um, yeah all right and and so how big is the market do you think uh, currently for, for we um, we looked at at some forecasts from, from Tractica Tractica is uh, predicting that the the market will grow very rapidly. The market goes to a, a $60 billion uh, size in uh, 2025. 
So we are uh, looking forward to getting a significant part of that market. Right. Okay. And in terms of um, uh, revenues, so uh, can you talk a little bit about that? So in typical semiconductor models, you've got uh, you got IP licenses, you've got royalties, you've got some of the stuff up front, the, uh, the NRE, the non-recurring engineering um, revenues, although that's not what you're doing it for, but it's part of sort of the, the initial stage of commercialization. Can you talk a little bit about how you make money and, and what the sort of the near-term uh, sort of milestones are? Yeah, we have four uh, four paths to revenue. The first path, as you mentioned, is the sale of, the, of, of IP. Uh, IP is then followed after the design of the of the product by by royalties. Uh, the uh, the next uh, uh, path to revenue is the sale of chips, completed chips. Uh, that path will kick in after we ship some uh, uh, modules. I expect mm -hmm. that modules uh, development systems will. Uh, will um, take off first uh, for the simple reason that you plug one of these modules in and it works straight away. Right. So um, we're thinking of a cheap module, um, something that plugs onto a, uh, uh, an, a Raspberry Pi computer that uh, we can ship in, in large quantities, saturate the market with this, which creates channels for future IP and, and chip sales. Right. Okay. And so um, in terms of the first commercial products, so the Akita 1000, can you talk a little bit about where you are with that one right now? Well, the Akita 1000, as you probably know, we had engineering samples earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Those engineering samples have been tested, found to work satisfactory. We uh, then moved into into uh, creating a, a production mask, which is uh, has been completed and has been sent to TSMC. TSMC is now in the in the process of of producing our chips, our right. first lot of chips, a okay. commercial uh, product. All right, and so those will, will be sold um, as commercial products or as sam still as sort of you know uh, samples or you know, testing products for potential customers. These uh, chips will go into uh, primarily into uh, into modules. We will uh, ship those uh, modules as commercial products. Right. Um, there will not be huge numbers initially. We will ship this first to uh, to a number of, of uh, small engineering firms that are currently waiting for for products. Right. Okay. So and then you know, the in, what people always look at with, when it comes to technology companies is sort of you know what's beyond the horizon. Can you talk a little bit about your development roadmap for I wouldn't say spin-offs, but different versions of Akita going forward? Yeah, Akita is uh, is the beginning of a, of a whole family. The right. Akita One Thousand was designed to cover a very large area of the market. Mm. The um, uh, first spin-off will be a smaller Akita, a smaller Akita in the sense that it has fewer uh, fewer circuits on it, uh, and therefore it will be a lot cheaper. If you look at a wafer, for instance, that you you ha we have on our table here, um, the larger a chip is, the more area it takes on the wafer. Yep. The, the more uh, area it, take, it uses on the wafer, the more uh, it uh, uh, it costs in, uh, to manufacture. So. Um, Akita 500 will be very small, and is aimed at the uh, the market for uh, refrigerators, uh, uh, home appliances, right. uh, that sort of things, where you only need uh, maybe a, a few thousand neurons rather than than a million. Yeah. Okay. And look, this is a 200 mil uh, wafer. Uh, you're producing, you're manufacturing on 300 millimeter, right? Yeah. So there will be substantially more, about 30 percent more in, in typically uh, chips yeah. on a, on a bigger wafer, right? So that's where you get your economies of scale. That's right. Uh, the bigger you go, the better it is. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, <clears throat> so lastly, and it, this is a question that um, um, that we get back from our our readers, uh, not not specifically for Brainship, but in general about the semiconductor market and how tight um, capa production capacity is really. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so you know the likes of TSMC, the foundries of this world are, you know, completely sold out of capacity, uh, probably for the next two years or so. And yep. some lead times of simple basic modules uh, can run up to 12, 18 months right now. So, how have you uh, been able to secure your sort of production slots with you know, TSMC, and, and and how do you see that going forward? We uh, we have an excellent relationship with uh, with Social Next in uh, in Japan. Social Next has already uh, booked production slots with TSMC, so um, we have been assured that there is no uh, no issue with uh, with shortages for the Akita chip. Right. Okay, that's good news. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Peter. Thank you.